Do you have clay scraps? Well, of course you do. Making clay scraps and wasting clay is an integral part of making pottery, but we do not have to waste that clay. We can recycle it. So welcome back to another episode of Pottery at Home. This is the series where I give you all the information that you need to know about making pottery in the comfort of your own home. So let's get into recycling clay. So reclaiming clay is the pottery word for recycling clay. This is possible in every state of greenware up until when you fire your pots. So before we fire our pots, they're called greenware. There's different phases of greenware that you probably know, clay, leather, hard, bone, dry, all of those are just stages of greenware. So as long as your clay is somewhere in that stage, it can actually be recycled. You can't recycle your clay after this stage because it's actually changed chemically. So when it goes through the firing process, the heat actually changes it chemically so that you cannot bring it back to its original state. However, bone dry pots are simply just dried out clay. So all you need to do is add water. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways that you can reclaim your clay. The first one is for a much smaller scale studio. So like if you've got a desk in your corner and you're just doing some hand build pieces on the weekends, you don't have a ton of turnover and a ton of clay waste, this first method is for you. And then later on, I'm going to show you my reclaim system for a slightly larger scale studio. So first, let's get into this one. All you need is some sort of container. I've got a jar and you need to reclaim. So the first thing you want to do is let your clay dry out completely. So this is an old plate that didn't turn out very well and I let it dry out. So you can do that in some sort of container if you want, but when it comes to actually reclaiming, you want to put it all into your jar and just break it down into little pieces. So when you're reclaiming, regardless of which method you use, you don't want to put like a ball of clay in your reclaim. If you're reclaiming larger pieces, you want to like flatten them out so that they can dry out. Now, not all potters do it this way. I mean, there's different ways of reclaiming. Some potters don't let their uh, clay dry out completely before reclaiming. I do it this way because I think it's way easier to uh, actually mix up afterwards and you don't have to wedge as much. Um, so I've integrated it into my system and I encourage you to do as well to just let your pots dry out and then the reclaim process will go quite a bit easier. You won't end up with lumps in your clay. Okay, so we've got our scraps. Now I'm gonna kind of push them down and then I just add some water. If you have slip, that's actually best. Um, if you do have any slip from your making process, add that instead of water. But if you don't have that, that's fine. You just add water. So I'm gonna fill it up to just underneath um, where they're still sticking out just a touch. And then if your clay is actually dry, you should see it immediately start to fall apart. However, I am going to give this 24 hours so that it can fully decompensate. So I will meet you guys tomorrow for that. Okay, so it's the next day. And as you can see, our recline has completely disintegrated. So all of the particles have kind of gotten into mush and on top is just a little bit of water and I can go ahead and just pour off the water on top. So you can go ahead and pour the water into wherever you're pouring your waste water. Ideally, you don't want to be pouring this water down the drain because there's definitely going to be some clay particles in it. So you want to use something like a water filter. But if you're interested in this topic, I do have a video already all about my water systems. I've mentioned it before. It's one of my more recent videos and it's really great. <laughs> so definitely go check it out. I'll, I'll link that down below. Okay, so next I'm going to use a few additional things. So I've got this Tupperware thing here and a towel and a smooth um, cotton uh, piece of fabric. Okay, so I want to use the smooth cotton piece of fabric. This is the part that's going to be actually in contact with our reclaim. And you want to use a fabric here that is clean, that's not going to get your clay dirty, but also has a smooth texture to it so the clay can easily be peeled off of it. And then underneath that, I like to use a towel, and this is simply to absorb the extra water. 
And I also am gonna use a Tupperware. You don't actually need this if your towel is gonna to soak up everything. But to me, this is like a backup um, in case the towel leaks at all. So, I'm going to put everything all together and then just pour my Reclaim into it. So you can use a spoon or a wooden tool to get out anything that's left over. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot stand the sound of a metal tool scraping the inside of a jar. It gives me like nails on chalkboard. <laughs> so I could use a spoon for this, but I don't want to deal with that noise. And I'll just spread it out. Okay, and there we have our Reclaim. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit now and dry out. How long this needs to wait depends a lot on your climate and the humidity in your studio. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this overnight. My studio is pretty humid, um, so I think that it's going to be fine left overnight. And we'll check on it tomorrow and see how it's looking. Okay, so it's two days later and yesterday I did check on my Reclaim, but I thought it was a little bit too wet. Now I think it's dry enough. It's still quite wet. Let's see. So you want to wait until your Reclaim can basically peel off the fabric, like so. But this is probably too wet still to wedge. It's like coming off on my hands. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to kind of smush it into a little poop shape. <laughs> and I'm gonna let it dry out like that. The reason I'm doing it this way and not just leaving it in there a little bit longer is because when it's sitting in here, it's not drying completely evenly. Um, of course, you know, you wanna spread it out as evenly as possible so it can dry, but when you kind of smush it together and mix it up, then it's going to be more homogenized and so it can dry evenly right on the corner of your wedging board. So yeah, I'm just going to let this dry out. I'm guessing it's going to take until tomorrow. Things are drying really slowly in my studio right now. It's quite cold outside. I'm in a basement. I've actually ordered a dehumidifier because things are drying dreadfully slow. So probably in your location, it won't dry as slow. So you do want to be checking on it every day, maybe every like six to 12 hours, you want to check on your clay. I always come down in the evening if I've got something drying to like check on my pots, see if they need to be flipped or covered with plastic. So anyway, tomorrow I'm going to check on my little lump of clay and I'll probably just wedge it up and then it'll be good to go. So yeah, now let's go over to how you can process a larger amount of Reclaim in a bigger studio space. So let's get into my reclaiming system. So for my reclaiming system, I use some plastic boxes from Ikea. I also use two buckets from my local hardware store and I use a self-made plaster bat. I'll definitely show you how you can make plaster bats in the future, but in the meantime, there's probably other tutorials online. And I've also seen them for sale from ceramic suppliers as well. So you can also just buy one of these bats. Okay, so if you watched my recent water systems video, this should all look very familiar to you. So here is kind of my drying station for reclaiming clay. So there's a spectrum of dryness of greenware, right? So right in the middle, you have the perfect clay that you're gonna be using on the wheel or with hand building that comes straight out of the bag. Now, anything to the drier end of that spectrum that I wanna recycle goes in here. So my trimmings, um, whenever I'm doing slab building and I have off cuts, just random bits that are quote unquote waste, I throw them in here. So it's very important to not throw clay in that's too thick because I really want them to be able to dry out. So I don't remember what happened here. It was just like a chunk of clay that was too hard, I guess. And you can see I cut it up into flat little pancakes um, so that it can dry out. And I've got four of them so I can let one dry while I add clay to the next one. And then when I'm recycling them, I actually put two in at once. And here is my recycling bucket. So 
If you are, unlike me, very concerned about um, keeping your clays as true to the original color as possible, so like the red clay, you wouldn't want to add white to your red clay, then you're going to want to have separate bins for each color and a separate bucket for mixing them in, unless you're going to go ahead and really clean the heck out of this one. I, however, don't do that. Part of my practice is experimenting with clay colors and com combining them together. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my red and my white and I'm going to combine them in my reclaim bucket to make a new color. This is something that's totally fine to do so long as your clays are all the same type. So all of my clays are stoneware clay, so they all will be fired to the same temperature. And so I'm able to combine them in that way. If you're using like an earthenware and a porcelain, you're definitely not going to want to combine these in your reclaim bucket. And likewise, if you're trying to get back as close to that original color of clay that you got from the bag, you're not going to want to do these, but I'm going to go ahead and do this because I think it's fun. So I'm going to grab my reclaim bucket and I'm going to grab two dried out clays. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is my slip bucket. So this is my bucket that I store everything that is on the wet side of Perfect. So uh, my throwing water and uh, slip, anything that's wet goes in here. And I'm going to be adding this to the dry stuff. Another thing you're going to want to have is a respirator because we're going to be pouring our dry stuff into this bucket and there's probably going to be a poof up of dust. I've got my window open right next to me, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it right in. I'll try and pour it so I don't make too much dust, but it's going to happen. You can fill this bucket up quite full, even though we're going to add some water to it next. There's plenty of air pockets in there that the water can fit into, so you can just fill it all the way up. And then once I'm done, I'm going to switch on my air purifier and then leave the room for a little while to let the dust settle. You can stay in your studio as long as you keep your mask on, but I don't like wearing that thing, so I just left and did something else in the other room uh, for about 10 minutes, giving the dust enough time to settle. And after that, it's safe to take off my mask and return to the studio. So next, all there is to do is to add our slip. See how it's kind of sinking down already? So we're going to add the slip until it's just about reaching the top. Perfect. Okay. So you can see I've got some solids in here too. Um, this you can actually put straight onto the reclaim bat, but I'm going to do that another time. So just like in the smaller version of reclaiming, you just want to um, fill it up until it's basically at the line of your clay. And if you don't actually have enough slip to add to this, you can just add water instead. So exactly the same as the simpler version of reclaiming, we do want to now let this sit for 24 hours so it really has a chance to soak up that slip and become very soft. So I'll see you tomorrow for the next step. Okay, so we have our bucket of reclaim here. Now, just like the previous reclaiming system that I showed you, there is a little bit of water sitting on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that off. That's just extra. Oof. That's so heavy. So now we have our plaster bat and all I need to do is scoop out everything here and put it on the plaster bat. I think I'm actually going to need a second bat.
Okay, so we have our lovely uh, clay reclaim here, and now I'm going to wait another 24 hours for it to dry out. And hopefully it will all dry out very smoothly. So what I might do at some point is flip them over. I'm just gonna keep checking on them over the next 24 hours, 48 hours maybe even, um, just to see how they're drying out. The goal here is that they dry out like as evenly as possible. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it is two days later and what I did yesterday was I checked on them and they were dry enough to flip. So they're gonna dry faster on the side that's touching the plaster. So I flipped them over so that the side that was facing the air could get sucked into the plaster and just generate a more even drying. That's the same reason why I poked all these little holes into the clay to expose more of the clay to the air so it can, again, dry a little bit faster and a little bit more evenly. I also covered them with some plastic overnight because I was a little worried they would dry out too much by morning. So now what I'm going to do is just wedge up this clay. It probably needs to dry a little bit longer, but I like to wedge it up as soon as it's wedgeable to start kind of mixing it up. Um, you'll see why in a second. So the clay is still really soft, but um, when you're doing this yourself, you'll be able to feel that it's not fully even, um, you know, like things like the edges are going to be more dry than the inside. So by wedging it in two steps, you actually end up with a much more even clay. So I like to basically wedge as soon as the clay is wedgeable. So meaning that it's not sticking to my hands, that it's not sticking to the plaster and just give it maybe 20 or so wedges. And then I'll roll it into a little cone and let it dry out further like this. So you can see that it's still quite squishy. I wouldn't use this clay right on the wheel right now. Okay, so we've got our little village of reclaim here. Um, now, as I mentioned, I'm going to let this dry out a little bit more. I'll probably leave them until tomorrow because things dry very slowly in my studio. And what you can do is you can put some cloth over, over your reclaim to kind of slow down the drying. Also, this helps keep a humid environment. So it dries slower, but it also ends up drying more evenly because of that. Um, so I'll probably do this tonight and then I can probably wedge them up tomorrow and go ahead and use them. So I hope that that was helpful for you. Let me know if you want to see a plaster bat tutorial um, so you can learn to make these guys because they're really handy, not just for reclaiming, but for various parts of your studio. You can make molds with them. You can make uh, bats for throwing with them. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in that and any other video really, because this whole series was based off of your frequently asked questions. So yeah, if you have any additional questions, definitely feel free to write them down below or you can always message me on Instagram. Otherwise, that's it for me today. I hope that you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.